Hello, and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today, it's with great pride that I'm unboxing Yamaha's brand new AS1200 integrated amplifier. This 100-105 watt amplifier is superb. Um, it's a lovely trickle down from the much larger um, AS3200, and please watch that unboxing video, it's uh, up already. Um, they will be releasing a 2200, a little bit bigger, and maybe somewhere in between, but this wonderful single-ended amplifier is superb sound, wonderful value, traditional analog design, and it's perfect for the price. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, the boxing for these amplifiers is quite substantial, and again, if you've watched one of the uh, videos for the AS3200, you'll understand. Um, for shipping purposes, they are uh, held together with these packing bands. Uh, they're quite essential, actually, with things that are heavy. Uh, moving them around uh, is difficult, and being able to grab them from these bands is, is an important element. There is uh, model information on all of the sides, and a scan code for the basics of uh, model and serial number down on one end. I think this is really straightforward. The first is simply just to get rid of the banding. And then uh, slide a lid off the top. Okay. Now, once uh, once you get the lid off, you get to reveal the inner box. Now, this one's a lot more sort of customer or showroom friendly. Gone are the basic brown of the packing and freight box. And they've added a wonderful colour box inside. There's a really nice quality pic picture of the amplifier and its silver option um, with its illumination of the VU meters. There's basic Yamaha and then uh, the photograph of the alternate in blank again with the VU meters. Uh, not much more information on there. Opening this inner box is really straightforward. A simple couple of nicks. And we're in. Now the amplifier weighs 20, 22 kilos, um, and so we'll be very sort of gentle when the time comes of getting it out. Um, now, firstly, accessory-wise, uh, Yamaha's um, IEC power cord. It's a two-pin, uh, not earthed uh, power cord, New Zealand. There's a set of AAA batteries, obviously for the remote control. Uh, and the unit's remote. Now the remote is a good size, it's not massive. Um, it's got a good quality uh, plastic bag, and then a complete sort of seal that protects the um, aluminium look frontage of the remote. The remote itself um, is well balanced once the batteries are in. Um, it's easy to use, whether you be left or right handed, and the main functions are operated with the thumb easily. Uh, towards the back here, we have a little cardboard slip, and inside the slip is a little bit of information. So, firstly, there's a international warranty card and some information to access Yamaha's international resources, and then a very comprehensive um, user manual. Again, then there are uh, polystyrene pieces that are firmly supporting the amplifier in its box. And given its weight, I'm just going to quickly stand up and lift it out. Now, the amplifier is then protected with a bubble paper sort of product. These are sellotaped with little tags of tape. And it's pretty straightforward to sort of uh, remove that tape without having to cut or otherwise tear or damage the paper. So there's um, two pieces of tape on each end, two pieces of tape on the top, and it's lovely folded. I mean, somebody's taken a little bit more time to ensure that this product is well, uh, well protected.
Okay, so let's look at this for the first time. Um, from the front, you'll see that a little piece of tape has been added to ensure that the potentially vulnerable on-off switch is, um, is, is taped in place, so it uh, can you know, not wobble around, I guess. It's a very heavy amplifier. This is in black with its gloss panels, as you've probably seen. Lift it up briefly. Let's have a look. So, as I alluded to, the first thing is the power switch. Now, this is a big rocker switch. Um, to beside that is a headphone output. It's well thought out. It's six and a quarter. And above it is the IR sensor. Above that is the Yamaha logo and its model. Through the middle, you can see the VU meters. These can be adjusted via the switch here to show peak or VU. And beside that switch is A and B, which is speakers off, A, B, or A plus B. In the middle, we've got bass, treble, and balance control in that sort of classic look of large, uh, large control knobs. Those knobs, when they're in a resting position, automatically uh, activate a relay to bypass their operation completely, kind of like one of those pure direct buttons of the past. Over here we've got its input selector. Now this is a really good quality rotary encoder with a lovely fit and finish. It's got a good click to it in its operation. Um, unusually for most is that this amplifier also has a main direct input and it's kind of critical for those people that are building a stereo and incorporating it perhaps with a home theatre. At the click of a button this can become a power amplifier driving the same fronts uh, that your stereo system does in a home theatre environment. There's a couple of line inputs, there's a CD input in this tuner and phono. Uh, removing this little switch, again a little um, tape to protect it, this is the audio mute. Now the volume control is uh, motor driven. Uh, when you hit the mute button the motor engages and brings the volume down, um, I don't know, 3, 6, 9 dB, something like that. When you unmute it again, it, it, uh, the motor engages and brings the volume up. It's really, really elegant to see, and it's a lovely little feature. Of course, above that is the main volume control, and again, a lovely fit and finish to it. Rocking it forward briefly, and please hang around for some photographs. I'm going to try and do my best to get uh, a look inside. You'll see, firstly, it's well ventilated. Through the middle is a very large toroidal power supply, specific to Yamaha. Behind it are four very large caps supplying the amplification stages with all of the power that they may require. And then you've got an almost dual mono design in its approach with the left and right amplification stages separate and heat sinks just inside the wood, the, the, the panelling. Looking at the side you'll see the gloss, the piano gloss finish. And as we look at the back, we kind of see a little bit more magic. These inputs and outputs are beautifully well appointed. Firstly, we've got dual binding posts. Obviously, I alluded to that with the A and B speakers at the front. These are wonderful in their design. Their fit and finish is superb. Uh, brilliant as far as the quality that they've incorporated in such a, a well-priced amplifier. Here we've got the first of the uh, single-ended inputs, so there's no balanced circuitry on board. It's all a single-ended amplifier, but that, I guess, is what you would expect with something at such a keen price. It's got uh, Now, the single-ended are actually uh, tapered very slightly, so as you push a plug on, it tightens its grip, so it's wonderful to see. Yeah, the inputs are labelled uh, tuner, input, one and, uh, input for CD, and then line. Beneath it is the phono preamp input and its uh, grounding. Most importantly though is a little switch enabling you to change between moving magnet and moving coil load settings. That's awesome to see in such a good priced amplifier. And you've got inputs and outputs in the form of loops, so you've got a tape loop I guess, line in, line out. And then you've got pre-outs that can be utilised. Um, the pre-out is typically used if you are then running this into a much larger power amplifier, um, but it also can also be utilised for subwoofers and other things like that. Beneath it is the main input, and that's specific to the power amp mode that I alluded to when talking about the front. There's the uh, outputs on this side, which of course is now the left channel, again an emulation of A and B. Above those outputs is a switch, and this relates to the standby management of the amplifier. 
This, uh, if you are listening for a prolonged period of time without adjusting anything, so not changing an input or changing the volume, then this will go to sleep in a power save mode. If you consistently use the amplifier for long periods of time, then I would recommend that you turn this to an off position and it will remain on. Over here we've got the, some slightly boring bits, which is the input for, uh, for trigger and a remote in and out. There's a USB for servicing only, and beneath it is the main IEC power cord. This beautiful amplifier, I mean, it's extremely well made. Very, very heavy, and it's wonderful to see such an elegant design incorporated in such an affordable amplifier. So there we have it. Yamaha's AS1200, a 100 watt integrated amplifier, unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.